Damn it, it is, boys. Let her ride. I'll take care of it. Ten in the gun. Eighty dollars worth. Twenty over. Twenty. I'm passing. Okay, boy. Come on, baby. I wish you wouldn't sneak up on me like that, Mary. I wasn't sneaking. Well, next time, whistle or do something. Oh, relax, Larry. If you keep this up, you're going off the deep end. And stop picking on me. What you need is something to eat. Here, open those cans. Put your hands up. Don't turn around. Well, hello. Over there, sit down. Now, who are you? The name's Autry, ma'am. Mighty happy to make your acquaintance. What's doing here? I was about to ask you the same thing. You're too late. My brother's been gone an hour. Oh, Larry Evans is your brother, huh? Too bad he didn't stick around for chow. I guess I made a mistake sitting with my back to a door. The mistake was in following me. Now, where's the posse? Posse? Now, don't tell me you're not scouting for the sheriff. Kramer wouldn't like that. He don't appreciate my button into his business. Now, yeah, you're lying. Wait, Larry. Just what are you doing here? Looking for the man who killed Norton. Ed was a friend of mine. Well, Larry didn't do it. Ah, oh, he's stolen for time. Come on, let's get out of here. You were losing to Norton in that dice game, weren't you, Larry? So what? No 
men to be shot for less. He didn't do it, I tell you. Ed was the best friend we had. What? He's been our guardian ever since Dad died. Guardian? Well, I didn't know Ed was anybody's guardian. Well, there are a lot of things that you don't know. If you don't believe me, ask the sheriff. Come on. It's a good idea. Looks like you'll be here any minute now. Why, you dirty double cross. Larry! What are you trying to do? Prove that you're a murderer? Give me that. You make a run for it now and you'll be caught sure. Well, I'd rather be shot than lynched. You won't be lynched. Kramer's leading that posse. Well, he couldn't stop him in town. I'd destroy him up if he had made a break for it. Hey, wait a minute. Get me out of this steer's necktie and I'll help cloud your trail. Why should we trust you? Why, it's ghosted haunt me if I let him hang the wrong man. Wait a minute, Mary. It's a trick. It's your only chance. Where'd you leave your horses? The Green Tree Spring. Well, let's wait there for me. In just a minute. How about my hardware? And don't try anything funny. I'd hate to think I'd guessed wrong. We won't. John, check the place. What are you doing here, Gene? I thought you was headed for the Double D range. Just stopped by to water champ. Any objections? Nope. But I'll take that six-shooter. Six-shooter? Just to make sure that you mind your own business. Now, look here, Kramer. I'm not wearing this badge for fun, you know. Oh, and you, it looks mighty pretty, though. Thanks. Where's the kid, Autry? Kid? Quit stalling. Where's Larry Evans? Hey, that reminds me, Randall. Weren't you in that dice game when Norton was killed? That's right. So was Hopper and Mason. Now, Gene, you don't think one of us daylight are dead? How would I know? I didn't hit town until it was all over. No sign up here, Sheriff. Now, that's real disappointing. Just got an extra Java. Like to join me? Not me. Your coffee had flowed a horseshoe. Well... <clears throat> Hope I don't see you in jail. Jim crack corn, I don't care. Jim crack corn, I don't care. Roll master's gone away. When I was young, I used to wait on master and hand him the plate. Pass the bottle when he get dry and brush away the blue tail fly. Jim crack corn, I don't care. Jim crack corn, I don't care. Jim crack corn, I don't care. Roll master's gone away. One day he rode around the farm to fly so many they did swarm. One chance to bite him on the thigh. The devil helped that blue tail fly. Jim crack corn, I don't care. Jim crack corn, I don't care. Jim crack corn, I don't care. Old master's gone away. The pony run, he jumped the ditch and tumbled master in the ditch. 
He died, and the jury wondered why the verdict was a blue tail fly. Jim Crack Corn, I don't care. Jim Crack Corn, I don't care. Jim Crack Corn, I don't care. The sheriff's gone away. What are you doing, Sheriff? Playing engine? You see a lot of things that way sometimes. Besides, if Mary's with her brother, Jean could have been covering for her. He's a sucker for a lady in distress. Come on, let's get out of here. I sure hope she isn't hurt. It's all right. We'll get you over here. This ought to fix you up. Again? I thought I'd cooled you off. Larry, are you all right? Yeah. But he won't be when I get through with him. Put up your hands. I've got him up. Well, then, put him down. Keep him up. Wish you two'd make up your minds. Larry, the sheriff will catch up with us. 
Okay. I'll settle with you later. Hey, where's my horse? The way he was traveling, he's probably in the next county by now. Take his. With pleasure. Hey, you're not gonna leave me to hoof it. I hope you get blisters. in your family. Don't you touch me or leave me alone. Tom, gone you, I'll skin you for this. What? Hold it, whoa. Seems like that brother of yours only uses his head to hang his hat on. Why didn't you wait for me like you promised? You were gone so long, we got panicky. Oh, nice work, champ. What are you trying to do, put your head in the noose? Well, every cowpoke on the range is looking for you. Larry, you better head for the border. Larry is sticking with me. I thought you said you were going to help us. I am, until I find out who killed Ed Norton. It'll be all right, Larry. Sure, sis. I'll get in touch with you as soon as I can. Come on, Larry. Let's look for your horse. I thought me and the gophers knew all the holes around here. Maybe Autry dug one special. If he did, he had a reason. Well, I better get back to town and alert the border patrol. You mind if any of the boys have a look around? No. Go ahead. Well, I'd feel mighty put out if I should find that Evans kid decorating a tree. Don't worry, Sheriff. We keep it legal. Better give the horses a breather. That Palomino of yours has been limping for the last half hour. Say, by the way, if you didn't plug Norton, how come he was killed with your gun? I ran out of dough and I put in my gun to stay in the game. Like this one? Yeah. I had a pair of them. You were out to make yourself a reputation, weren't you? Well, you certainly did. Too bad. That kind of a dime store hero went out with Billy the Kid. What are you doing? Putting my ear to the ground. It's an old Indian scout trick. Silk picks up sound. Wagon coming. Hey, Larry, where are you going? I ought to knock your ears down. Yeah, I'm sorry. I guess I lost my head. Get out of those clothes. What? You heard me. Chuck the duck and get in that creek. In the creek? Well, it's ice water. You want to give me pneumonia? Yeah, you get lead poison if they catch you that great check shirt riding the Palomino. Come on. Just the smell the bacon frying when it's sizzling in the pan. Hear the breakfast horn in the early morn, drinking coffee from a can. Just a riding, rocking, roping, pounding leather all day long. Just a sweating, swaying, swearing, listening to a cowhand song. How it beckons, and I reckon I would work for any way to be free again, just to be again when the bloom is on the sage. When it's roundup time in Texas and the bloom is on the sage. 
I long to be in Texas, back a riding on the range. Just to smell the bacon frying when it's sizzling in the pan. Hear the breakfast horn in the early morn, drinking coffee from a can. Just a riding, rocking, roping, pounding leather all day long. Just a sweating, swaying, swearing, listening to a cowhand song. How it beckons, and I reckon I would work for any way to be free again, just to be again when the bloom is on the stage. Would you get down and join me? Thanks. But we just come from town, and we're shoving the sun. Did you hear about Ed Norton? Yeah. I'd like to meet up with the skunk that did it. So would I. Ed was a right guy. Yes, he was. You and your partner both riding the same car you used? Hey, bud, get out of that water. I told him that Rona his adrift if he didn't hobble her. Howdy. <laughs> if you pass by the easy way, stop in for chow. Much obliged, we will. Hey, Larry, hurry it up. gotten the wind up, and to think I give that coyote an invite to the ranch. Still warm. Well, they couldn't have gotten very far. We'll get them this time. Those men are coming in here like it was payday. Over here. Give me my gun and I'll stand them off while you head for Texas. I just came from there. Come on, boys, up in here. Here, you may need this. Now, don't hit anybody. You're in enough trouble already. Where are you going? I'll be back. Keep me covered.
stupid. <laughs> Fire. Get your horse. I'll be right with you. Hold it. They're getting away. Come on, boys. It's been cut. Morning, Miss Mary. <laughs> Great day for the race, ain't it? What race? The human race. <laughs> It's a joke. How's Larry? You heard anything from him yet? It's too bad he skipped town. It would helped his case a lot if he'd stuck around and let the law take its course. Was Judge Lynch presiding? Oh, I admit them boys was a little out of hand when I got there, but it won't happen again. You can tell Larry that for me. You can tell him yourself if you see him. Mary, did I ever show you this gold toothpick? Governor Hanley gave me this for rounding up the Macy gang. And them fellas was as tough as engines to run down. And why don't you find the man who killed Ed Norton? It's just what I intend to do, Miss Mary. Uh, here, I can... <laughs> if you do see Larry, tell him what I said, will you? Well... I I'll be moseying. By the way, Miss Mary, you and your brother didn't happen to run into a fellow named Gene Autry, did you? Gene Autry? Yeah, he's a friend of mine. Nice fella, too, if he's on your side. Different story if he's on t'other. There you are. Well, be seeing you, Miss Mary. Is this Jim Hedge a friend of yours? Yeah. Yeah, Jim and I get along pretty good. Except where Annabelle's concerned. Who's Annabelle? His wife? She complains loud enough and kicks at everything. She's a mule. This old Jim's out prospecting. Sure we're safe here? You couldn't find a better hideaway. The old gym feels crowded if anybody's within 30 miles of him. Hey. You crazy jackrabbit. Well, the next thing you know, you'll be running from the sound of your own spurs. But there's somebody coming. It's that canyon. It's got the fanciest echo in the state. If you can hear a bear snuff down there, you'd think it's right outside your door. You and your doggone echoes. Say, by the way, uh, was it your idea to put up your gun in that dice game? No, oh, I was going to pull out. Mason suggested it, or Randall, I don't know which. How long was it there before Ed was shot? Oh, about five minutes. Then the lights went out. Something funny about those lights. Better boil up some coffee. I'll take care of the horses.
A girl from Tennessee He was so lonely In New York and so was she The boy said how The girl said hi you all He could have kissed her When he heard that southern drawl They walked up Broadway As if they owned the town They wouldn't hear it If the buildings tumble down Somewhere out yonder The home folks smile to see The boy from Texas with his bride from Tennessee. They walked up Broadway as if they owned the town. They wouldn't hear it if the buildings tumble down. Somewhere out yonder the home folks smile to see the boy from Texas with his bride from Tennessee. start some action. <clears throat> Sam, will you stop whispering in my ear? Who's whispering? If you don't like the way I talk, tell it to the vet who yanked out my tonsils. Well, good afternoon, Mary. Here, let me take that. Thank you. You needn't try to hide it, Mr. Mason. I've seen the paper. Oh, I'm sorry. You know, I'm beginning to believe there aren't enough men in this town to make a decent, unbiased jury. See here. I've got money and friends. Now, you just say the word and we'll have your brother over the border by tomorrow night. Why are you so interested in Larry, Mr. Mason? Well, to tell you the truth, Mary, I got him into that dice game. You did? Why? Well, that's kind of hard to explain. You see, Larry was trying so hard to be a, uh, a big shot. And Ed was treating him as though he was still in short pants. So I, well, I guess I kind of felt sorry for the kid. I see. That's why I hoped you and Larry would sell me the ranch. You could use the money right now, and anything I could do would, uh, would sort of ease my conscience. You're very kind, Mr. Mason. The name is Don, you know. All right, Don. But I guess we'll just have to wait until I hear from Larry. And you don't know where he is? I wish I did. Well, well, if you do hear from him, be sure and let me know. I will. I'll be waiting. Gee, Larry, 
be all right. Surprise a young colt. Sell the ranch to Mason? So you were listening. What are you? I can't. Not without Larry's consent. Dad left the ranch to both of us. Your dad was a smart man. Got any canned goods here? Well, yes. Fine. Where is Larry? You want to know or does Don Mason want to know? I do. And for your information, Mr. Mason has been very kind. Yeah, he struck me as that kind of a fellow when I saw him with that posse. We only went with him to help Larry in case there was any trouble. I can imagine. Is that a sack? How much did he offer you for the ranch? Twenty-five thousand. Twenty-five thousand? If I was Larry, I'd jump at the chance. He won't. He's just like Dad and Ed Norton. Dead set against selling. It will hurt to tell him. That changed his mind. You, uh... Like this fellow Mason? Well, I can't say that it's any of your business, but Mr. Mason has been... I know. Mr. Mason has been very kind. My cinch. You can take care of that later. Looks like he's traveling. Maybe we better have a talk with the sheriff. Come on. Loaded pistols and loaded dice. Take my warning or pay the price. Cause it ain't healthy to try it twice. Loaded pistols and loaded dice. Now Larry Evans was a gambling cub who went and joined the Western Social Club where shooting dice was everybody's whim. It seems they favored everyone but him. The Sharpies, they were taking him for fair. He said, I'm wise, this game ain't on the square. I mean, them loaded dice ain't gonna do. Cause I've got something here that's loaded too. Loaded pistol and loaded die. Take my warning or pay the price. Cause it ain't healthy to try it twice. Loaded pistols and loaded die. For a ride. Where are you heading, Autry? Well, I was just taking some grub out to Jim Hedge. Jim Hedge, eh? Hey? Oh, what do you know? Dave here was just suggesting that we pay old Jim a visit. Well, that's what you call a coincidence? Yeah. Uh, gee, I'd like to borrow that the pistol from you, if you don't mind. Now, look here, Sheriff. It might go off accidental. I can hurt somebody. All right. Remember, that's two of you on me. I'm keeping count of them. Say, I've been wondering, Sheriff. Who turned the lights off when Norton was shot? Nobody turned the lights off. Blew a few. There was a dozen fingerprints on the switch box, but all of them belonged to the regular employees. Where 
you going? This is the shortcut to Jim's place, Sheriff. Jim's place, Sheriff. Try to lead this way, Sheriff. Lead this way, Sheriff. what happened to Our Girl Tuesday. Stay tuned now for a half hour of popular recorded music. Thoughtless of old Jim to leave his radio on. You could have been entertaining. Young Gavin's, for instance. Oh, let's get out of here, Dave. This company bores me. Hey, Sheriff. There was two horses here. And one of them was Autry's. Yep, I couldn't possibly guess who was riding the other horse. Helping a wandering man is against the law, ain't it, Sheriff? Mm-hmm. <clears throat> well, what are we waiting for? Proof that Larry was riding the second horse. Come on, let's play some more Indian. Stay here and watch Autry. playing post office. Post office? Why, that's a kid's game. Not the way we play it. Jim Hedge ain't gonna like this. You all right? 
Jim had such a nice collection. So you are leaving a note for young Evans, eh? Dear Jim, brought you some grub. Would like to see you. Look me up as soon as you get back. Gene Autry. You always read other people's mail? You well, stuck your nose into this affair once too often, Autry. And now I'm reading... Now we're going to apologize to Gene for mistrusting him. Well, maybe you are, Sheriff, but I'm not. Gene, I owe you something for the suspicious way that I've been acting. Oh, forget I about it. I won't forget it. There's your six-shooter. You're coming back to town with me. My wife is giving a sociable at the house tonight, and I know you're going to enjoy it. Get set for the poker, folks. And if there ain't enough women to go around, the boys with the white hanks are pinned on the sleeves are willing and able to be any man's partner. So grab the ladies and let's go! Sheriff, maybe you can tell me. Did anyone come into that gambling room before Norton was shot? Yeah, there was a waiter brought Ed some coffee, and then Sam Gardner come in. Sam Gardner? Yeah, he, he wanted to talk to Dave Randall about a piece of property. Uh, <clears throat> gee, uh, I'll take... All right, I know. <laughs> the ladies say they're not comfortable to dance with. I want this one back. You can pick it up on your way out. Why all the sagebrush on the boys? They're getting ready for the old tiger celebration come Saturday. Best break I've ever had. Oh, you help yourself. Thanks. Somebody here I want you to meet. Mary, Barney Coogan. Uh, you two folks have met before, have you? I don't believe so. Well, this year, Jean Autry, Miss Mary Evans. Happy to meet you, ma'am. Uh, hey, Sheriff. Your wife is looking for you. Is she looking or is she fretting? She's fretting. Come in, my love. Thanks, Mary. What happened to Larry? How did you know? Mrs. Kramer told me. When we got there, the place was empty. Did you bake this cake? Hello, Autry. Listen. My dance, I believe. I'm sorry, this one's mine. But uh, I asked her first. <laughs> Better luck next time. Larry. How would I know? Pretty Mary, pretty Mary, won't you let me take you home tonight? Pretty Mary, Pretty Mary, we'll be riding neath the moon so bright. Pretty Mary, Pretty Mary, I'll be holding on to you so tight. I'll be waiting at the door with a lot forevermore. Pretty Mary, I'll be courting you tonight. 
That sure is a pretty dress you're a-wearing with the little pink flowers and the little bluebirds. That sure is a pretty dress I'm declaring with the little pink flowers and the little bluebirds. You sure are pretty and you make me sigh like a rose on the vine that kisses the sky. Too pretty for words and you catch my eye with the little pink flowers and the little bluebirds. Pretty Mary, pretty Mary, won't you let me take you home tonight? Pretty Mary, pretty Mary, we'll be right beneath the moon so bright. Pretty Mary, pretty Mary, I'll be holding on to you so tight. I'll be waiting at the door with a love forevermore. Pretty Mary, I'll be courting you tonight. Pretty Mary, pretty Mary, won't you let me take you home tonight? Pretty Mary, pretty Mary, we'll be right beneath the moon so bright. Pretty Mary, pretty Mary, I'll be holding on to you so tight. I'll be waiting at the door with a love forevermore. Pretty Mary, I'll be courting you. Pretty Mary, I'll be courting you tonight. How come Ed Norton was so set against selling the Evans Ranch? Same reason as old man Evans, I guess. Land was getting scarce. Thought someday it might bring in money. I understand Mason offered twenty-five thousand. At a fair price? Too much. Since the house burned down, nobody's lived there. The place has gone back to sagebrush. Thought Mason was a gambling man. What does he want with the ranch? I can answer that. I don't know why you're so interested in my affairs, Autry, but if you must know, I'm planning to open a cafe, and I figured I'd save money if I raised my own beef. It's a good idea. Let me know when you get your place started, and I'll give it a try. I'll make a point of it. Sam, Jay Carper's looking for you. Thanks. Somebody gunning for you, Audrey? Oh, just some of the boys feeling their oats. Now, settle down, folks. This ain't nothing to miss a dance over. Gentlemen, let's rejoin the ladies in the front parlor here. Thanks, sir. Good Who was it? I don't know, but I aim to find out. Come on, I'll take you home. What's Dave Randall doing here? I guess the sheriff invited him. Of course he did. He brought us together just to see what we'd do. I can't stand this cat and mouse getting much longer. I can't understand why Randall's out to get your brother. Maybe it's because of the fight he had with Larry over the ranch. The ranch? But he wanted to buy it to raise heifers, but Larry wouldn't sell. Randall wants the ranch. Mason wants the ranch. Anybody else hankering for the place? Well, Sam Gardner tried to get Dad to sell just before Dad died. Sam Gardner? I don't say. I think I'll take a ride out there in the morning and have a look at that place. I want to talk to you. I haven't got time now, sis. Know where I can find Autry? 
No, but he's going to ride out to our ranch in the morning. It's almost morning now. Thanks. Larry! Larry, what happened? What do you want with Gene? He brought the sheriff. If I hadn't heard him coming up the canyon, I wouldn't have gotten away. Larry! Come on, hit the... Huh? Had a wonderful time at the sociable. Thanks for introducing me to Mary. Introducing? He knowed her all the time. Well, don't go on his buttons. I'll settle him right now. He can't do this to me. Me. Trusting him like this. Oh, that coming. Just a minute, Autry. Well, Larry. You shouldn't have brought the sheriff back to the cabin. You've got it all wrong. I'm giving you a chance, Autry. Why, you cheap imitation of a leather slapper, I ought to turn you over to Kramer just to teach you a lesson. Draw or I'll plug you. Give me that cap pistol before I use it to part your hair. Quit it, Chipoon. You want to get hurt?
young squirt. You haven't got brains enough to be a gunman. Do I have to beat some sense into you? You're so set on being a ten-horned bad man, you can't even think straight. Why do you suppose I took Kramer through that canyon? To hear my own echo? You leave my brother alone, do you hear? You leave him alone. Hey, wait a minute. Hey, hold it. Wait a minute. Wait, what are you minute. going crazy? Cut it out. He was beating up on you. Well, sure he was, and he had a doggone good right to. Oh, fight, fight, fight. That's all you do. Go ahead and get your heads knocked in or blown off and see if I care. Howdy, Mir. Hello. Jim Head, you old jackrat. Am I glad to see you? <laughs> I got your note, Kelly. On that hunk of mica. You should have left it under the agate. Put your piece. I want you to meet Miss Mary and Larry Evans. Glad to meet you. Same here. Jim, somebody wants this ranch. Wants it bad enough to commit murder. Now, what could be here that'd pay a man enough to risk his neck for it? Nothing. Hold on now, Jim. <laughs> I don't have to. I've been over this country hundreds of times. No gold? Oh, maybe enough to fill your tooth. No silver? Well, you might find enough to play the watch. Are you sure there's nothing here? Are you crazy in the head? I've been prospecting these parts ever since the Apaches were taking pot shots at everything that was moving. <laughs> that is, uh, everything but coyotes. Bad luck to shoot your own relatives. Well, I guess that's that. Jim, I want you to take Larry and keep him undercover until you hear from me. Oh, I couldn't ask Mr. Hedges to take a risk like that. You didn't. He did. That's the way you get yourself into trouble, young fella. Sticking your nose in other people's business. Hit the dirt! What I want to know is, who's gunning for who? I couldn't tell. He was against the sun. Oh, Larry. Come on, Miss Mary. I'll take you home. Maybe we can make it before the sheriff gets curious. What time is it? <laughs> Bless you, Miss. That ain't a watch. That's a compass. I couldn't find my way home in broad daylight without that old friend of mine. Well, I'll be doggone. I don't understand. What is it? Why, it's... The sheriff won't run, Mary. Run. I've done enough running. Here, Jean, cover me. It'll put you in the clear. Mary, are you crazy? They'll lynch you. Oh, no, they won't. As soon as we get back to town, we'll smoke out the real killer. Well, Jean, I see you caught him. Looks that way. Must have been a tough chase. <laughs> sure was, Sheriff. Oh, <laughs> come on, young fella. That about where you put it, Larry? Yeah, I guess it was. I think it was a little more to the right. It was right square in front of Larry, and you know it. That thing ain't loaded this year. Ain't been touched since the day it was used on Ed Norton. The blazes is going on up here. Chicken. Well, now, simmer down, Dave. Gene's got an idea about... Gene, 
I was just telling the boys that you had an idea who killed Ed Norton. You're wrong, Sheriff. I know who killed him. Uh, you, you know, my gold tooth. What are you horning into this for, Autry? Because right from the start, Randall, I smelled a skunk. Where the heck is that gold tooth pick? Everything's set. Uh, here you are, Sheriff. Thanks. I'd hate to lose that. Governor Hammy gave this to me. Oh, well, now, Gene, you get here and take Ed's place. Uh, that is, if you ain't superstitious. Say, by the way, Sam. When you came in the room, was Larry's gun on the table? Not as I can remember. Yes, it was. The waiter just brought Ed's coffee in, and Sam was standing in the doorway. Oh, wait a minute. Let's get on with the reenactment of this here crime. Now, ought they get the dice? Now, a couple of minutes after Sam come through the door, the lights went out. Gene! Gene! Oh, I'm sorry to scare you, Mary. I just had to duck a couple of powder burns from those blanks. Blanks? I don't think we'd leave a loaded gun around with a kill in the room. Well, here he is, Sheriff. He was making a break when I nabbed him. Sorry, Mary. We'll see about that. This gun was dusted with graphite. Somebody's hands ought to be mighty dirty. Well, boy, you heard what the man said. Let's uh, <clears throat> take a look at him. You're clear, Jake. Sam? I wasn't near the table. No, but you found what was on the Evans Ranch. And when old man Evans wouldn't sell, you burned him out. You're crazy. That's when you brought Randall into the picture. But Ed Norton and Larry wouldn't sell either. So they both had to be put out of the way. You drew a blank, Autry. My hands are clean. No, you didn't kill Norton. But you did take a couple of pot shots at me. Yeah? Why? Because I kept you from lynching Larry. With him out of the way, you figured the case would be dropped. Larry? No dirt on him. He was supposed to take the rap for Ed's murder. That's why they got him to put his gun on that table. Sam turned off the lights. But the fingerprints. Had his gloves on, Sheriff. Mason? You killed Ed Norton. Just like you tried to kill me. Did I? You wanted that ranch. I'm sorry to disappoint you, Autry. be a bull-legged horny toad. But what? Gene, just what is on that ranch? The only thing that'll deflect a compass needle. Iron ore. Iron ore? Well, there must be acres and acres of it. We're rich, sis. Get it back! 
it, Kramer. Well, he's got your horse. That's his hard luck. Down. Oh. Stop it, you idiot. Hold it, you nuthead. Whoa. Get up there. Whoa. Oh, come on, you fuckhead. See? I got something for you. Had it all ready, and for a while I didn't think I was going to get to give it to you. Well, what do you know? A gold toothpick. Yeah. Come on down, fella. We've got a certain judge we want you to meet. Get in here. Pretty Mary, Pretty Mary, won't you let me take you home tonight? Pretty Mary, Pretty Mary, we'll be riding neath the moon so bright. Pretty Mary, Pretty Mary, I'll be holding on to you so tight. I'll be waiting at the door with a love forevermore. Pretty Mary, I'll be for you tonight. Pretty Mary, Pretty Mary. Won't you let me take you home tonight? Pretty Mary, Pretty Mary, we'll be right beneath the moon so bright. Pretty Mary, Pretty Mary, I'll be holding on to you so tight. I'll be waiting at the door with a love forevermore. Pretty Mary, Pretty Mary.